okay um let's let's pray right let's just begin to pray just talk to the lord um maybe you can pray in the spirit it's quiet in our hearts as we come before him uh, just become aware of his presence become aware of his um, of his greatness of his magnitude uh, become aware of uh, his holiness his purity um yeah just quiet in our hearts so just allow him, allow him to speak to us you know many times we speak to the lord and we continue to pour out our hearts to god this morning you know why don't we just quiet in our hearts to hear him speak to us the word of god says that um, in fact, the Lord Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. So as the Lord Jesus is our shepherd, and he, as he has created us, designed us to hear his voice as his sheep, that may be quiet in our hearts to hear him speak to us. Right? Um, and let this be our prayer and say, Lord, you speak to me. And the Lord will speak in many different ways. He will quicken His word. He will prompt uh, by the Holy Spirit. He will open our eyes to our uh, inner man to see certain things visually. So all this He does. Father, we thank you that you said, be still and know that I am God. And yes, Lord, even as we quieten our hearts this morning, Father God, we we just want to come to that place of knowing, Lord, in the inner man, God, that unmistakable knowing, that unmistakable assurance Lord, in the inner man. Thank you, Lord. And I just believe that the Lord, you know, various aspects of who He is and, and what He has been speaking to us, you know, He'll continue to speak to us. And he's continuing to put certain things in our heart. So let's just receive it in our spirit. Let's perceive in our inner man, in our inner person. And Let's make a note of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Father God, we, we just turn ourselves up in, the, in our spirit. We don't want to be passive, but we want to be expectant. We want to be, Lord, people of faith. Lord, active, expectant, sharp in our spirit to receive, God, what you're putting in our hearts, God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's just begin to just thank Him. You know, if the Lord has spoken to us and, you know, in simple ways, you know, He might have given just a word, He might have. You know, drawn us to remember certain things. Uh, let's just thank Him. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that you're a speaking God. You're a God who's alive. You're a God who's among us. You're, you're one who is with us. Lord, we thank you that your presence is so real, Father God. We thank you that it's not just theory that we talk about, but Lord, 
that it's experience knowing you is an experience god experiential knowing we thank you lord we thank you father god for this privilege thank you for drawing us lord thank you for making a way god for each one of us to come to the holy of holies lord yes lord you who dwells in unapproachable light you have made a way for each one of us or to come to your very presence lord to come to your throne of grace to receive to come to your throne of grace to receive mercy to receive grace we thank you we thank you lord fill us with your grace this morning fill us with your empowering grace this morning yes lord let the weak say that i am strong you know if you're feeling weak and weary just declare in the presence of the lord i am strong you know if you're fearing if you if you feeling very fearful uh, and doubtful and um, you know for some reason uh, feeling very tired and weary just just say you know i i will be strong let the weak say that i am strong you know you just say i'm strong in the strength of the lord i'm strong because the spirit of the living god dwells in me i'm strong because i'm the temple of the holy spirit I'm strong because I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm strong because I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. I'm strong because the uh, the he took my sin away and in its place he made me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so I'm strong in the Lord and I'm strong in the power of his might. I'm strong because the joy of the Lord is within me. I'm strong because the Holy Spirit has released the love of God and the joy of the Holy Spirit is in me the joy of the Lord is in me I'm strong because I'm strong in his joy in his strength hallelujah thank you thank you lord thank you lord uh, just go ahead and say god i exchange you know the, the when we come to the presence of god there is always a divine exchange so we can place before him before the foot of the cross what is unnecessary what is not required and in and, and take in receive uh, what he's extending he's extending grace he's extending mercy he's extending strength he's extending life and so um, we can just ex in exchange um, you know if we've been carrying burdens if we've been carrying heavy things you know we can just lay it at his feet and say god i take i take oh god i receive and i take and i just want to lay these things down so what are some things that we can lay down some unnecessary weights that um, that slow us down unnecessary things that hold us back we can lay it at his feet this morning hallelujah thank you lord thank you father god thank you let's just begin to just praise him thank him just open our mouths and maybe uh, you know it's loud enough so you can hear just thank in your own languages just thank the lord just praise the lord hallelujah we bless your name jesus we thank you father god we thank you for greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world we thank you oh father god for the power of the cross oh father god we thank you for the finished work of the cross this morning we thank you oh god that you will never leave us never forsake us come on let's just open up our mouths even those who are watching online you know if you can uh, just open your mouths and just praise the lord and thank the lord um uh, the bible says let us come before his presence with thanksgiving so we have a reason to give thanks because of the great exchange um, that has happened even today even right now so let's just begin to thank him let's begin to praise him let's begin to worship him this morning father god we thank you lord we thank you for who you are god we thank you for right now father god what you are doing in our midst oh god we thank you father god right now oh god what you are lord bringing about oh god thank you for change thank you for new things lord thank you for removing oh god thank you for renewing lord we thank you master we thank you we thank you we bless your name god we bless your name oh father god yes lord we we remain open we remain oh god uh, surrendered we remain yielded father god so you can speak to us master as only you can father god yes lord speak to us lord we we are ready to receive an impartation in our spirit in our inner man god yes lord thank you father god thank you lord pour out your spirit in an even greater measure this morning pour out your spirit oh god you know if we are saying that lord we are hungry for more of you we are hungry we are thirsty for more of you we are saying god lord i just i'm not satisfied where i am i'm not satisfied but i want more of you you know the lord pours out more of himself more of what we need what we really need in the inner man so the lord pours out so just go out go out just uh, go ahead and just receive yes lord 
you know, receiving is the posture of our heart. So we receive with open hands, we receive with open hearts. <coughs> Excuse me. We receive with humility. We receive with joy. And so, you know, just lay everything aside and say, God, I, I've come for an encounter. I receive from you, Jesus. I receive from you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, oh God. We thank you. Yes, Lord, this morning we give you praise. We give you glory. Yes, Lord, even as we, Lord, even as we, Lord, behold your glory, yes, Master, we pray that uh, that from our deep, from deep within our hearts, God, that we will worship. Worship will arise. Adoration, praise, thanksgiving will arise, Father God, and that we will truly worship in spirit and in truth, O oh God. We thank you, Master. We thank you. We thank you that you created us for this one thing, Lord, to be in awe of you, God, to receive our plan and purpose from you, Father God, to walk in victory, Father God, to walk and do the good works that you've called us to do, Father God. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> okay. want to check okay um, just a couple of minutes I know uh, um. Better? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, hey, sorry about that. So, last class, anyone remembers what happened? Seems like such a long time ago, somewhere in the past. Okay, what do you remember? Someone, yeah, from last class. Oh, I just asked our brother here. Don't look into the notes. Just think what praise and worship. Last class, what did we learn? Anything that you can remember? Okay. Anyone here? Sorry? Last class? Okay. okay. We looked at praise and worship and then um, distinction. And then, yes, you're right. What else? Sorry? Different expressions. Power. Yeah. Power of praise. Was it the last class or the class before that? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So we ended with that, right? Worshipping God in uh, in difficult times, right? In tough times. And we looked at uh, some examples. So who? Some examples that we looked at from the Bible. Worshipping God in difficult times. Anything that you recall? Anyone, anything that you recall? Now, worshiping God in difficult times, what did we... We looked at some examples, we looked at some life. Oh, sorry? Um, yeah, Job, briefly, but we also looked at someone else from the Old Testament, someone else from the New Testament, last row. Remember? Sorry? I can't hear. Uh, what is she saying? Um, yeah, but um, we experience God's presence when we worship, true. But we looked at the life of Abraham, right? David. Um, in difficult times, yeah. Um, we looked at uh, David, yeah. Hmm. Defies definition, but uh, in when it, when we looked at uh, difficult moments, worshiping God in difficult moments, we looked at uh, we looked at Paul and Silas, right? Um, and that's in Acts chapter sixteen, right? We looked at uh, Abraham offering Isaac, and it was a difficult thing. Why was it difficult? Because Isaac was the promised son, and he received Isaac after so many years, and then God says, "You offer Isaac as an offering of worship." But he still he still did that. Then, of course, um, 
uh, we looked at David and how he worshipped the Lord. So, in all this, um, in studying all this, we realize that well, praise or worship has little to do with how we feel. Like many times, because it involves singing, because it involves um, you know all these expressions, we we make it a point that hey, I don't feel like it today. Today I don't feel like worshiping. Today I don't feel like praising. Right? But we need to make that adjustment and say, you know, especially in those times or in those moments when we don't feel like it emotionally, I don't feel like thanking God. You know, I don't feel like praising God. I don't feel like singing. You know, those are times when we need to look at who God is, like right? look at the character and nature of who God is, because that's never going to change, right? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the best way to look at who God is is look at look into His Word. Right? You look at the character of God. You look at the nature of God. His faithfulness, His goodness, His mercies, and everything. And then, automatically, you know, our feelings change as well. And even if the, our emotions don't change, right, we can make a decision right we can make a decision and say i will bless the lord i will praise the lord right like uh, psalmist says in psalm 34 verse 1 i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth okay so uh, so that is something that we looked at last class okay so uh, just to end that chapter uh, we're looking at what can actually hinder us what stops us or what prevents us from worshipping God? Whether it's personally or maybe corporately together when we gather, what is it that really stops us? So I just want to hear from you, you know, while we look at all these things that we're going to look at, but personally for you, you know, what is it that prevents you from worshipping God? You know, sorry? Mm, so a sense of guilt, a sense of shame, right? That stops you from worshipping God and entering into his presence. Anyone else? What is it that, that stops one from worshipping? Maybe from personal experience, you know, you can just say, oh, this, this really stopped me. What? Physical, you're tired, okay. Anyone else? Um, yeah, Anthony. From laziness. Laziness. Okay, okay. Busyness, right? You're busy, so you don't want to make time. You're saying when you just uh, say, "Okay, I let me just spend some time just praising or worshiping Him," then you think of hundred and one other things that are not done in your life, right? Okay, I need to do this. I need to do that, and only then all those things come crowding in, and therefore this becomes a less of a priority. Right? So you say, "Okay, I'll do it later." Right, right now, I need to do some cooking. Right now, I need to you know, do that. I need to send that email. I need to send that text, make that phone call. Uh, right now, I need to do all this. Therefore, you know, worship, uh, I'll do it later. Right. Uh, what else? What else hinders? Yeah. Uh, OK. So sometimes we get uh, discouraged. Uh, you use the word vexed, huh? getting uh, discouraged, sometimes angry with God. God, you did not do it. Right? You did not do this. You did not answer. I, I'm not able to hear your voice. Uh, where are you? <laughs> right? And in fact, the psalmist went through such seasons. But he even turned that into a conversation with God. Turned that into a moment to actually approach God. Right? To sing to him. You know, where are you, God? Are you there? I really there? Can't you see? I'm, I'm struggling. He turned that into a time of communing with God, right? A deep communion with God. You know, no, no masks, nothing at all. You know, no pretense. Very sincere, very honest, very raw. And he just turned it around and said, you know, are you there, God? And just venting his anger and everything at God. And then coming to a place of saying, acknowledging God, yeah, this is who you are. Right? So, yeah, so all that. Yeah, sometimes stops us. What what else? You know, sometimes we 
you know, in a corporate setting, we look at someone who's leading and then something about that person puts us off. Right? Something about that person, okay, whatever. It, that person reminds you of someone else who used to bully you in school, whatever. You know, it could be any reason, but then for some reason, right, you don't like that person. Uh, or, you know, that kind of puts you off. You know, so offense, right? we are offended. How can he say that? Or how can she say that? Or whatever reason, sometimes we, we can't even think of a reason. Um, okay, Daniel says, when some something else becomes an idol in life, yes, that's true. When there's a God substitute, right? There's an idol, right? When there's something else substituting the place of God in our lives, and then you're not able to worship. <laughs> wrong cards okay yeah that's true that becomes a distraction that becomes a hindrance true sorry unforgiveness yeah uh, it's it's like offense like bitterness or unforgiveness uh, in our hearts and then we are trying to worship go beyond that but it's like a it's like a closed door right you don't feel that freedom because it's like a heaviness you know yeah. So all these uh, reasons. Let's look at a few which we have in our notes. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are in page. What page is it? Uh, in hindering attitudes. What is it? Page two to four. 34, 35, okay. 24. Okay, 34, right. <clears throat> okay, so the first one is pride. Because worship is actually bringing ourselves down, right? Is is actually saying, God, you are great. And it's actually bringing ourselves. We are exalting God higher than ourselves, higher than everything else. Right. So it's an act of humility to worship God. But when we have pride in our hearts, right, when we are proud of whatever, you know, it, it, it need not be proud, you know, it can it, it can be about anything. It can be about whatever accomplishments, you know, for a person who's ministering, it could be pride in our ability to minister, you know, it could be a pride in our talent, it could be, you know, various things that we are proud of. So pride becomes a hindrance. Right? It stops us from worshiping God, <clears throat> and especially, you know, when it's when it's when when somebody is ministering, you know, in worship, and you maybe, you know, you do certain things because you want to appear to be holy, or you know, it's not a direct relationship with pride, but you know, something that you put on, uh, which you are not. Uh, to appear to be you know, someone else that you are not in front of people, right? that becomes a hindrance as well, right? And it's in a way it's related to pride because you know you are you want to show that you are this, you want to show that you are very spiritual, you want to show that you know you are extroverted, whatever in praise, and which you normally are not, you know, because people are watching, you do certain things, right? So. Um, so pride becomes a hindrance, right? The second thing that we see is irreverence, which means lack of respect, lack of respect for God, lack of respect for His people, right? So irreverence or lack of respect becomes a hindrance. Right? How can we worship God without respecting Him, without honoring Him, right? How can we worship Him? And what are the ways by which we dishonor when we don't obey, right? When we have these you know, this this attitude against God. So we need to check our lives because uh, when, we, when we say, okay, I, I tried to worship, I could not, you know, maybe we should check our lives and say, is there pride? Right? In any way, is there pride? Is there a lack of respect for God? You know, how can we show lack of respect for God? Right? Practically. Any thoughts? Fun of others, okay, okay, okay. You don't respect people, okay. But directly, when it comes to uh, 
respecting God or dishonoring God, uh, what are some ways by which you know we? Uh, okay, not prioritizing God. Okay. Sorry. Not listening to His word. Okay. Not listening. So, um, which means not obeying, not carrying through. Right. Um, any other thoughts? I don't care kind of an attitude, okay, towards God. Okay. Mm. Mm. So not prioritizing, right? Mm. Sorry, not? Not repenting, okay. Mm. When God speaks, when God convicts, not repenting. So, yeah. So when we don't, when we don't, you know, esteem God in a practical way, we when we don't esteem His word, right? Which means when we don't respect His word by not obeying, not taking time to really receive, right? To read, we are actually, you know, not honoring God. Right? These are practical ways. Right? We say, God, I honor you. We can sing it. But in our lives, we may not actually show it because in our lives, it's completely opposite of what we are singing or what we are declaring, right? So a very simple way is, you know, am I honoring his word? Am I esteeming his word? Am I making time for his word, right? Um, it could be word. It could be even the presence of God in prayer and so on. So am I honoring God? Am I respecting God in these ways and like you rightly said you know am I obeying you know okay I'm listening I'm reading but am I in my life am I obeying because that is the fruit of showing respect for God if we truly saying oh, I have respect for God in all these ways then we would live in a way that's God honoring right and live in a way that God's God honoring whether people are watching or not Right? Whether people are watching or not. If people are watching, then we behave a certain way. When people are not watching, then we behave a certain way. When people are watching, our choices are different. When people are not watching, then our choices are different. You know, our decisions are different. That it means that there's a problem there. We are not really, we're not really respecting God. Right? Because if we choose to say, God, I respect you, then whether people are watching us or not, whether we are alone or whether we are with you know, other people. Whether we are in, you know, uh, in a church or a, you know, that spiritual kind of environment, or in any kind of environment, right? Which means that it's not a church. We are in a in a kind of environment which is which is wild, right? Which is totally opposite of church or God or whatever. But even in that environment, if we choose to be steadfast, right? That means that we are honoring respecting God in our hearts, right? So that's the thing. No matter what situation, environment we are in, we are still continuing to be steadfast. That means we are respecting God and right? honoring God. So um, irreverence for God, we can actually show in very different ways. But when we, uh, particularly when it comes to worship, when we respect him and we honor him and then you know, uh, we see that when we don't do that, sorry, it becomes a, a hindrance, right? Okay, so Bhagya says worldly things, okay, that becomes a hindrance, right? Okay, the third one is this happens many times, right? When we are in a in a new setting, okay, uh, it, and particularly in corporate worship, you know, we're going to look at what is personal worship, corporate worship, what happens when you know later. And corporate worship simply is when people gather together, like what happens here. Like in Bible college or in church. So this one thing actually hinders us from worshiping. What is that? Spectatorism. You know, spectatorism, meaning we become a spectator. Who's a spectator? When you go to a match, okay, you might be wearing, uh, let's say, which, uh, yeah, India, this thing, or let's say um, RCB, you know, uh, 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 
CSK or whatever. Okay, CSK fan. So you're wearing CSK T-shirt. You're going okay, but you don't get to play, right? You are a spectator. You go to the stadium. You got your ticket, and you watch. You watch the match. Someone else is playing. Someone else is playing the game, but you are a spectator. You might be involved in the game. You might be watching very carefully what everyone is doing, etc. You might be even shouting, "Hey, ball well!" and all that. You might be engaged, but you are still a spectator, right? You are just watching. You might be clapping, etc., but you're watching. Now, in worship, we are, in a way, you know. I think we should say that we are the worship team. Even though there is someone who is leading, and you know, and others are, you know, just someone who is leading as a lead worshiper to facilitate, but we see that all of us, we need to jump in. Whether the person is, you know, exhorting and leading and saying, you know, come on, let's do this, let's lift our hands, whatever, you know, irrespective of all those instructions or exhortations or encouragements. We are worshippers, which means we step in and we jump in of our own accord, and we begin to engage in worshiping our God. Right? We step in, we begin to worship. If we step back, then we become spectators. We are not engaged. Right? We are listening to what is happening. I just want to, you know, listening to. Uh, we are watching. Hey, what is that person doing? What is this person doing? What is that team doing? Okay, what are the lights there? What is the smoke machine there? Oh, okay, wow, oh, wonderful! And we become a spectator. We're just clapping. Oh, nice song. Oh, that was good. Oh, look at that. Yeah, listen to that electric guitar solo. Wow, they finished with the drums and everything. Wow, I put our hands together. We, everybody's you know clapping. Okay, I'm on, I'm also going to clap. But then we are actually spectators. Our heart is not truly engaged with what is happening. Right. So. When we have that kind of an attitude, I'm going to church. I'm going to attend church. I'm going to watch what is happening. Then we become spectators, right? Oh, I don't know this song, so I'm not going to sing. Many times it happens, right? Many times I I don't know. This is a new song. I can't sing, right? But that's a wonderful opportunity to to look at the words. You know, some and to think about the words, to sing out in tongues, to praise God, worship God in in, in tongues, right? It's a wonderful opportunity to do that. Okay, uh, so spectatorism. When we are spectators, when we distance ourselves, then we become, uh, you know, that becomes a hindrance for us in worship. We don't realize that. We come back saying, "Hey, not, something was wrong, right? Something was off. Something was wrong. Why we we did not." Take that step to engage. Okay. Fourth one is sentimentalism. Okay. Being sentimental about the tune or being sen sentimentalism, which means that you know you're paying attention to maybe the you know the, the melody, the tune more than the words, and so we are not again engaging in worship. Right. So. The music part of it, you know, and this ha this is a you know this is a draw for musicians, you know, musicians struggle with that, right? The music is great, the music is good, just focusing on that, just going wow, and and forgetting to really engage in stepping in, uh, engaging in worship, right? Um, maybe it's you know some church that we've seen online, some you know, some band that we've you know. Uh, We've seen online, and they come, and then they have a you know worship evening, worship night, worship concert, and then we go there expecting to be entertained. We go there, right? Oh, these are familiar songs. I'm just waiting for that tune, uh, you know, that that part here, oh, that break here, that phrasing here, and what is happening is we are focusing more on the the music part of it and forgetting that hey, it's actually a moment to engage. God's heart and worship, right? So that becomes that happens. You know, we need to guard ourselves against that. Okay, then the fifth one is um, merely paying lip service. What does that mean? This is a, this is what the Lord said, Matthew fifteen. You know, you say the right things. Right? We are saying the right things. We are, um, you know, singing the right words, but 
our heart is far away right so it sounds nice when you actually hear hear a recording it's sounding oh this person is saying the right things all the hallelujahs are there all the praise the lords are there and you know, everything is there but god knows god only knows and we know whether we are truly worshiping right worshiping the lord because these are just mere words right? our heart is far away we are not engaged so that becomes a hindrance right okay uh, another thing is fear okay. fear of what right fear of maybe it's because of some old experience right see when it comes to leading worship yes people do make mistakes right people talk down sometimes and people do make mistakes of being very controlling you know, uh, you know if you don't you know lift your hands now you know up maybe you know they shame people right instead of drawing people out of their shell to worship right just pushing pushing and and then people go further into shell i don't want to do this you know, i don't want to i don't want to lift my hands i don't want to sing sing out um and so fear of being manipulated maybe because of past ex past experience you know that person said that that worship leader said you know said jump and then i feel very ashamed and and so i'm not going to do it right so that becomes a hindrance right from the start you're saying i'm going to be i'm going to be careful right whatever the worship leader says uh, i'm going to i'm going to be careful about it i'm not going to do it right so we become fear of being manipulated so uh, controlled by whoever's leading worship and so on um the last one is when it comes to some new thing okay some new thing the lord is releasing uh, maybe we are not used to it we are not used to it something new that the lord is doing something new the spirit of god is introducing and releasing among us so we resist it because it's out of our comfort zone right we resist it um you had a question no okay so we we so we resist change any form of change you know, that happens right particularly you know maybe if people are just used to let's say liturgical worship what is liturgical worship you have a book of prayers and songs that are sing, sung from hymns and so on and so you know to change into some spontaneous worship spontaneous expression of praise and worship to god becomes a change big change right uh oh and then we resisted i don't want to do that and maybe you know when we looked at some of those expressions of worship of clapping and lifting of hands and you know even a dance or shout of praise and so that becomes you know that becomes a too much of a change for some of us i'm saying oh, i i don't want to do that i resist any kind of change right by nature right we are we we are creatures of habit Right? we want routine we want the same thing you know? um but change we are, we are not able to take it we resist change so even when it comes to worship you know, when there's a new thing the lord wants to do and the new thing is releasing we resist it and that becomes a hindrance so we can go on there could be you know many other things that could hinder us from um worshiping the lord so you know if we notice certain things in our own lives that are hindering Okay, so so the idea, why should we look at these things that hinder worship? You know, the idea is this: that when we know that something hinders, then we see, we make it a point to be careful in that we don't allow that to hinder us the next time wherever we go, right? Um, what is it that is hindering you from worshiping God? We need to deal with it, right? So that you can overcome that. you can go around that over that and and then press through and worship right um because especially when it when it comes to a hungry heart right and then there's a hunger then we'll put all these things away right by that i mean that when when you're hungry when you're truly hungry and you, you know for god when you're truly seeking god when you're truly wanting to you know uh, be in his presence then a lot of these things will be just minor issues right we just put it away but when that hunger level is not there right something has 
taken away our appetite for God, then you know we we are not mindful of all these things, and these things can creep in and become hindrances like uh, for us in worship. Right? So the main thing is this: you know, to look into our own lives and say, you know, is is anything hindering me? Am I being a spectator? You think about it. You know, we spend so many afternoons, you know, uh, especially in person class, or so many afternoons in you know supernatural worship. Uh, I mean, supernatural time, prayer time. So the thing is to ask yourself, right? Is anything hindering me from worshiping? Is anything hindering me from worship? Right? And to make a decision, I'm not going to let any of these things hindering to hinder me. Hinder means stop, limit me, right? prevent me from worshiping God. And you know, no one else can make that decision. You need to make it. Right? You need to make that decision. Okay. Any questions? Sorry, what? As a beginner. Mm. Okay. They should not be hindered. Okay. okay. So um, the question here is, um, you know, if uh, maybe as a beginner, as a person who's just, you know, being expressive in worship in all these ways, and, and you know, you, you begin to do this, but then there are others who watch, and maybe it's not their kind of, uh, it's not their way of expressing worship to God. And, so they come and ask you, why do you do it, and you know, uh, and and so on. So how can I uh, not be a hindrance to others, right? So how can I, you know, what what response do I give? Give an honest response, right? An honest response, and say, give the reason for why you do what you do. And especially since we have, you know, learned all this, you can always say that, hey, this is in the Word of God. So I'm not doing anything that is outside of, uh, you know, um, uh, of God's Word. Outside of Scripture, it is the, in the Word of God. It's um, it is there, and we are encouraged to do that. So, and and that is it, right? So, um, so an honest answer would always help. Not looking down on the other person. So most of the times, that's what you know. We look down on the other person. Hey, you don't even know this. You don't even do this. Um, you know why? And that that becomes a hindrance actually. But then, if we have an honest heart to heart talk and say, okay, this is why. This is the reason. Maybe you should do it yourself, and then uh, that doesn't hinder the person, right? It becomes rather you can encourage the person. The person, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. So, see, in your. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, your question is okay, if I, if I watch someone and I feel that that person is extreme in his worship or her worship, extreme expressions, extreme this thing. And it doesn't fit the grid in your mind. It doesn't fit the scale of measurement in your own mind, uh, where you have a certain threshold of this is what worship should be, or this is how extreme it should be. Right? It doesn't fit in. Okay. So, um, so in that way, if that is the case, uh, it becomes a hindrance for you. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. So the thing is this. You know, we will always have those kind of challenges. We will always. Because I remember, you know, going for a wedding, and uh, and then in that wedding service, one person was extremely vocal in worship, right? So, um, you know, I was just like thinking, thinking, you know, why why is that person like that? You know, it's a wedding service, and uh, you know, wedding you have a certain picture in mind, right? Solemn, uh, 
occasion, yeah, joyful occasion, solemn occasion. And so this person's worship was loud and, you know, it was just, so that was my, that was my understanding. I was like, why, why? But then you realize that, hey, that person is excited about God. It could be wedding, it could be funeral, whatever, but that person is excited and that person is expressing vocally. Uh, any, que any, any questions here? Uh, doubts? Yeah, you have a doubt? Okay. I'll just finish this. So, uh, so the thing is that you know, so it's a it's a adjustment that we make internally, right? When we say okay, so next time, or or if you if there's an opportunity to get to know the person, then you realize that hey, this person is fine. Uh, having said that, I know that there is also something that we do in the flesh, right? It could be, I I, I want to show. That is also a possibility, and that's the next chapter, what the next chapter is about. Okay, um, We'll come back to your question later, after the break. Right? We'll take a break right now, and we'll come back in 10 minutes.